Oh, that's a, that's a lot to take in. Oh, hey everyone, um, this is Joe from Action X. Okay, okay, they got me, they got me, okay, okay, I'm... Fuck, that, that ending! Okay, okay, I'm not on Hashtag Team Nini anymore, I'm actually on Hashtag Team Ricky. God damn it, they freaking convinced me, how? I blame musicals. Musicals have like a weakness in me. They 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 penetrate my soul. They penetrate my my um very bullish self-centered soul. I'm really tired. Anyway, guys, welcome everyone to what's on the tube or welcome back if this is your 10th time as this is the season 1 finale of High School Musical the musical the series. It's the end. I mean, it's crazy how November to January can pass by so quickly where I initially felt very positive about this series and I'm very I was very you know questioning about how they were gonna do ten episodes of this whole um, respecting the musical but also doing this whole new generation thing slide doing a musical production of the, of the musical movie that started it all to now here we are I am so beyond impressed with how they grew all the characters and we're in a very interesting place where we'll pick things off next year next time but before we get to that um, Overall, I love this episode. This is probably... It's it's the episode that made... This is going to probably live in my memory for so long. Because if you guys remember from the beginning of the show, I was not on anyone's team. I did not believe in Ricky. I did not believe in EJ. I was all fully on... Nini had to grow as a person. And she did. But also at the same time, we got to see an actual... Reinforcing... Actual development between Ricky and Nini separately... That when they came back together, it it made sense, and I actually fell. I didn't fall in love with it, but it's like it made me feel, and it's like okay, I'm fully in on this idea, and I'm fully in on this, you know, relationship now. Especially again, there's a lot of things to talk about for season two, but we'll get to all that at the end. But, but if you, okay, let's we'll get to there, but let's go through the butchered recap. So last week, it, this is a two parter, so. We pick things off for where last week left off. EJ is now Troy. He's going to play Troy for the remaining of Act 2. Everyone's kind of been questioning about it. Like, oh, what what happened to Ricky? That sort, that sort of thing. But no one knows that, well, Ricky's mom is in the audience, but with her new boyfriend. So that kind of sh shook his confidence a little bit. And he doesn't want to do it because he, he doesn't feel comfortable about performing in front of his mom's new boyfriend. And, you know, kind of destroying that brief sense of happiness he had when he had seen his parents supposedly happy and you know together well in the commodity of seeing their son perform in a musical so we pick things off from there everyone's kind of rehearsed everyone's going for the play we're beginning act two nini is on the wiser that um at the moment ricky's not troy anymore he's just you know he, he's already like departed ricky's trying to contact um nini personally to kind of let her know what's going on but she actually he actually texts his mom out immediately afterwards where that was kind of like that was a brief you know um blow up moment where Ricky was feeling his emotions that listen you are not supposed to bring your boyfriend here on the night of my show like I understand like when it comes to divorce well technically not, not in my case because my parents never really when they divorced they never really found another partner they're 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 both still single they never really I never so I don't have that personal experience but I do understand that seeing I do under that when your parents get a new partner that they feel so strongly about it, it it does make sense for them to meet them to meet the the kids because it it makes sense because um if it does go anywhere then they'll have to be step parents and we have to consider that into consideration sorry guys i ate a lot of food today i, I need this hot tea anyway so that's kind of where it blows up but his her, his mom's counter counter argument was that listen i get that but i'm happy now I want to be happy, and your dad seems happy for me that I found someone that I lo that I care about so much. And I'm not sure if that really sentiments to where Ricky's feeling right now or something like that. I really don't know. And so we kind of leave things off there. Nini's kind of in the straw that Ricky's not in the musical anymore, that EJ's kind of taking over. And we get to see them kind of like we, we see her initial shock that EJ is the new Troy for the time being, and Carlos actually had to step in as... Um, as um, Chad, which was pretty funny. Um, no offense. Um, Carlos is a great character, just not much of a great actor. No offense, he's a great choreographer, but I okay, whatever. Um, actually, the only thing I've notable that I can I can think about right now, because I know I just saw the episode, but 
I really can't think of everything right now because I'm still. I want to get to the ending. I want to talk about that ending, but so I'm already forgetting like the first half of the episode. But we got to see an original song from Ashley's character for Miss Darbus. This is. I think this was totally new in the in this production. This was not in the movies. So I, I felt it was like it, it very much tied into where the show was at, considering that Ashley and Big Red do have feelings for each other. And this was the moment, like I think Big Red really solidified that I really like this girl, and she always liked him. So um, that was kind of sweet to kind of get that um, to get that going. And then immediately after that, we get we get to the we, we. It's funny how we're just getting offhand like renditions of the songs because they're focusing on the on the actual show, which I totally understand. Like, if you want to see those songs, you can just go watch the movies. They're all on Disney Plus. So if you're watching the show, go watch the movies. So eventually, we get to see um, the the, the call ma- the the real climax song. I'm soaring. Wait, is this song flying? Yeah, soaring, flying. Again in a week. I forgot the name of the song. I'm just gonna call it "Sorry." Uh, but beforehand, Ricky is still waiting outside, kind of trying to get for, want, wanting to see this play over. Um, Gina shows up, kind of gives some words of encouragement, and I feel like in this moment, it's like it was still. I was still very much debating. It's like, is does Ricky still have feelings for Gina, or like what is it? Considering that you'll see in a moment, it's like, what was Ricky's inevitable like emotions toward Gina was it briefly romantic was it a sisterly was it a really good female friend I don't know I don't know that's something to explore next time um I keep skipping ahead you know ah beautiful um so we get to see Ricky and no we get to see EJ and Nini doing that doing trying to do the song but Nini knows in her heart that this isn't right and EJ, for his brief moment, realizes, yeah, this isn't right, too. So he kind of steps aside, and Nini goes straight towards Ricky. She he knows she knows that Ricky's the one to actually be able to be singing the song with. So we see... It took a little bit of convincing, but Ricky's like, you know what, let's do this. So they sing, and this was a genuine moment where it's like... I've all, now Here's the thing, when we started this whole show, Ricky... Or I, I don't know if that was the actor's purpose, or the Ricky as a character... Ricky was unrelatable to me. He was not, like, never scored any points. He never, like, he always felt like a douche. And then when we got to deeper in the show, especially now where he has grown as a character, he has emotion, he is showing genuine feelings. So seeing this was like, yes, this was as sentimental as in the movies where it's like we see these two characters singing this song and realizing they don't just like each other, they love each other. And that was just so powerful and, like, Again, nothing will ever beat the original. I, I still like again. I'm respecting what these actors are doing with the songs. It's just for me, it's like the original songs. They're doing perfect ads. When it comes to the renditions, obviously the originals are gonna overtake them, but they're doing such a great job on doing the best they can. So I'm gonna give them all the credit there. And so they have that moment. They have a brief, still touching hands moment where it's like something's more here. We see everyone kind of wrapping it up. We get to see the final. It's the farewell, like, um, bowing, bowing that most musicals and plays do nowadays. Also doing, um, we're all in this together. And, and again, another cool rendition. They were able to, like, combine both the actual musical aspects and the actual ending of a high school musical and combining the two. And it was also really sweet that we got to see um, Gina and, and Nini going to Miss Chan and giving her her line, which... To be completely fair, I mean, I, I get, I know it's a powerful moment for Miss Jen that like she got to pull this off, and also she got to perform her line. It's only for like maybe at best a hundred so people, compared to the millions. So whatever, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying like it's not really a fair trade up. But okay, who knows? We're not gonna blame anyone, <clears throat> Mr. Kenny Ortega. Um, anyway, so we see that concludes. Everyone gives a very powerful bow, bow kind of ending this four month journey these um, kids have been going through. We get back to the we get back to the green room, actors room, whatever you want to call it. And apparently Carlos forgot to mention that there was a card in the flowers and it turns out to be for Ashley and Big Red sent them. So I was really like, are you really going to reveal this now when everyone's here? You're going to confess your emotion. I mean, again, I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm not saying that, that that's wrong, but it's like I mean, everyone has that theater high because they just performed the musical, so I'm not sure if, like, all the emotions were in check, but okay. Um, what was her name? What was her name? Um, Courtney tells Ricky that, 
hey, the the lady, the um, the scouter left. So they're assuming that she didn't, she wasn't impressed with the final performance because there were still some very like iffy, like you know, secondhand discussion during the actual musical. So I guess that was enough for her to leave. I guess so. Ricky goes out to find Nini. Oh God, I love Jasmine Teeth so much. This is not a product placement. It just I I, re I really love Jasmine Teeth. Ricky finds uh, Nini in her dressing room. She's kind of like trying to hide the fact that she's a little disappointed, but she's she's sort of expect, accepting that. Hey, I think I belong here. You know, it's their loss. Ricky is trying to muster up the the words to say to her about everything, but he kind of plays it off as like, "Well, okay, the musical's over. What's next?" Nini tries her best to like give a more straightforward answer. But all this lingering, all this lingering, and then it explores to Ricky finally saying I love you. Like, this was something we've been waiting for 10 episodes. Well, not for me. I wasn't personally waiting for this for 10 episodes. I wasn't. Again, I was never on Ricky's side of things until more in the very end of this, of this season. So getting to see that was like, yes, this is, this is worth it. This was earned. This was something like seeing this. I don't know. The, again, the actor, kudos to him. He freaking sold this scene where... He emotionally accepted that he was ready to say I love you because it was the shock combined with her leaving, combined with um, her getting to Egypt, and then, of course, his parents sort of thing. And then briefly with Gina, I'm not sure if that counts, but, but either way, all those things that everything's been through the last six months was enough for him to finally admit, yes, I do love you. It's not just physical, the feeling, but it's also like saying it. And being able to communicate with that and seeing Nini's reaction to like, yes, he finally said it. And despite, and again, I'm not, I'm not knocking like, oh, he, her entire character development, like when she officially broke up with EJ and was ready to become an, her own independent person. I'm not saying that didn't matter, but there was always in the back of her mind and also seeing Ricky grow up as a person and being more mature, being more responsible, being more like sincere and, you know, more of like, Himself, which is again another parallel to um, Troy's character, where Troy was kind of having to lie to himself to the team to the scene because that's not the norm of things. Then Gabriella showed up and kind of he kind of opened up his entire person, his entire world to her, and he changed as a person. So that was nearly the same thing that they did here with Ricky, and they and I was initially worried for like a brief moment, and again now I'm finally admitting that yes, I am on hashtag team. Um, Ricky or hashtag Rini or whatever you want to call it. I'll, I'll figure out a hashtag whenever I get this uploaded. Um, but I was an issue where, because there was like a brief moment where Nini was like secondhand guessing. I'm like, oh no, is she going to be like the whole like, I'm totally like, over boys. I'm totally like not trying to be dating. And then she, she says, no, it's like, just kiss me. And it's like, it's perfect. It was like, that was a moment. That was a powerful moment. That moment was earned for me. That was an earned moment. And I Freaking respect the High School Musical, the series writers for making this happen, making this work, and uh, and kudos to them. Like they had a lot of things to deal with behind the scenes that they were able to pull this off. It's like you did your job, you did your job. Uh, so they're kind of like in the whole high, like they're in a relationship again. So they're like they're and they're also jitty from the musical. So it's like they're everyone's pep up with energy. And I think from then, yeah, so we go back outside. Everyone's kind of, like, trying to figure out, oh, we're going to have a, another party at Ashley's place. Everyone's happy. Um, well, where do we go from here? Where do we go? Um, so, but Gina has to has to head back to the East Coast. They never specifically said where in the East Coast. I'm going to assume Florida. Again, don't, don't quote me on that. I'm going to assume Florida because you would say New York. But if you don't say anything, I'm going to assume New York. I'm going to assume Georgia or Florida. I'm not sure. Those are, I'm just pulling them out of my mind. But... Ashley steps in and is like, listen, why don't you come to the come to the party? You know, just like, cancel your fly, we'll figure it out later, and then, you know, just come to the party. Gina's like, no, it doesn't make sense, because, like, you know, she's going to have to leave again. And then Ashley gets the bright idea, like, because she has a guest room. See what I'm going with here? And so we see Nini coming, walking out, getting a little praise, and then seeing Ricky and, and, her, and his parents together. She's very happy, ready to walk over to them. Possibly assuming they're back, to, to announce they're back together, something, I'm not sure. And the, the, um, the, the, um, what was this, what was this, the talent agent, the, the recruiter shows up in front of her and says, hey, listen, sorry, I had to step out for a little bit, but she offers her a spot in the program for next month. She gives her a business card, like, give me a call ASAP when you have decided. And we see Nini in the closing mode. Oh, oh, before we get to that, um, Eddie, Eddie, the principal, no, wait, 
no, it's Ernie, the principal, he shows up, he pulls aside Miss Jen and the robotics teacher, and he's like, listen, we found out who did the fire, it was you fucking too. And he was like, again, a like, brief, serious moment where it was like, listen, you two are in big freaking trouble, and, you know, we're kind of left on a cliffhanger there. And then Nini, and then like, and then back to Nini. Well, this happened beforehand, but I, I, I was, that's another important plot point. And then Nini is like, looking at the business card, but also looking at Ricky, it's like, What's he gonna? What's he, what she's gonna choose? And it's, it definitely leaves them in a very interesting place when we do come back for season two. But that was our end, a closing curtain to season one. But we got a brief, we got a brief like um, a brief um, short end credit, mid credit scene, credit 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 the credit screen where we see Big Red freaking doing tap dancing and actually season like I have a lot of questions like. Perfect way to end it off. Perfect way. It's like, we're going to see all this address in season two. We see them kissing like, okay. You know what? That's earned. Everyone's getting the, the lovey-dovey. Okay, that, that that's totally, totally fair. Totally fair. Oh, God. Okay. So, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of unpackaged there. I'll briefly talk about everything, but um, we're, 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 we're mainly going to stick with the season for now. As you m remember, if you have been watching everything since the beginning, I am going to do a proper season one review next Saturday, and then we're going to get to a season two predictions video at the end of this month. So stay tuned for those two videos. So we're, I'm going to be very light on there, not because I'm trying to like you know make you guys watch those videos, but also I, I want to give them my full thoughts. I want to give them their own videos to kind of like flesh them out so you guys know about it. But... Yeah, just just to stay put, um, for this episode stand stand out alone. I mean, if you're just comparing it to two part or just the season finale, it did it did a great job where it culminated the entire storyline for the first season. What with minor, you know, we didn't really get like a proper purpose for EJ. Just having a self admitted that he's not perfect and that Ricky was deserving of it. That was kind of his role for the episode. Um, we got to see Ashley and Big Red's whole recent romance. Um, romance flirting series wrapping to a close into like what happens to them next ricky and nini back together gina supposedly going to be staying around for next year so how will that impact everything for the next musical um carl is coming to his own miss jen getting her moment but also kind of gonna is gonna probably get screwed by something or someone we'll get to more of that next year um and yeah yeah it's a very it was a very strong performance for miss jen's first um First production at East High. Will it be your last? Probably. <laughs> we'll see what happens with her and, you know, the robotics teacher. There's a lot to freaking happen um, next season. And, um, but the acting on a lot of people's part were top-notch great. The choreography was great. Again, some of the musical moments were, that were not original. They, sadly, just could not, for me personally, to not live up to the movies, which I get. They're, but they're doing their best. I'm always, I'm always giving credit where credit's due. It's just, for me, it didn't reach that high. It made sense for the show, but it did not. Me if you're comparing it to the movie, obviously there's, you, you, it's a very like f far cry from it. And um, yeah, but I'm but if I'm I'm very happy. I'm very satisfied with this season finale. I'm very much on Team Rini, Team Ricky, whatever you want to call. Them. I'm gonna call Team Rini. Screw it. I'm, I'm hashtag Team Rini. Let's make that trending. Let's keep that going. Um, honestly, like I, I was just so happy, like. I, like, I remember the first half of the season, like, I was so freaking annoyed with everyone, and it was so, like, these are just standard teenagers, but then we got to see them all grow, and, you know, evolve, and, you know, mature a little bit, a little bit, not so much, um, and getting to see them end up where they are now, where I'm very much excited for season two, whenever that is. I'm very much excited to see where the story takes the characters next, but that'll be safe for another time, but, um, the, um, the writers did a top-notch job with this episode, I initially fought for a brief moment, like, where are we going to get a third High School Musical cameo? Where are we going to get that? Like, there's, we, we, we got Ryan, and we got, um, Martha. I finally remember the name, Martha! Why didn't I remember that? I watched Batman v Superman recently. Um, we got those two characters. Um, but that was one of the big six. Will we get a bigger, another big six next season? Well, I initially thought we were, like, going to get a surprise, like, audience member. It's like, I'm, I'm, Vanessa Hudgens, like... And Ashley says, though, I'm pretty sure they're going to show up. But I'll talk about more of that later. I, but I was initially anticipating Corbin Blue. I was initially anticipating, like, he was going to be in the audience somehow. Maybe he was going to be something. Else. I don't know. Like, I was expecting it. We didn't get that. So it's like, okay, you know what? Let's let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Um, but, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the season finale. I very much enjoyed it. 
perfect way to end up the first season and definitely left some very open-ended questions for when we come back for season two. I'm very happy it's already been renewed. Very happy for them that they're going to be able to come back um, for another season. When will that come out? I'm not sure. Um, it's not that easy. It's not that VFX heavy like The Mandalorian, which is another launch title for Disney Plus. So I have to be very speculative and very bullish. We could get season two as early as summer, but don't don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. I'm very much specifically predicting it could be out by summer. It would make sense as a summer show. They need time to film it, and it doesn't take that long to edit it. To be honest with you, like there is no VFX happening. Where we're do we see Baby Yoda shooting out somewhere? Do we see like a freaking? Um, I, I didn't see any of this Plus show. Just Mandalorian and um, High School Musical. So I don't know what else there is. So um, anyway, um, yeah, that's gonna do it. So overall, two thumbs up from this season finale, and that's gonna do it for me on this episode review. And that was the last episode review for High School Musical, the musical, the series. Sucks that we're not going to get another new episode for such a long damn time. Um, but if you want to know what else is coming up, what's coming next on What's in the Two? Well, we're not done with High School Musical just yet. We still got in the, we're wrapping up January with it. So remember, we're going to get the Season 1 review where I'll talk about the entirety of Season 1 next week, um, the next episode um, for High School Musical stuff. And then the week after that, you'll get the Season 2 predictions and hopes video, which I'll talk about like my hopes and wants for Season 2. Um, it's going to be a very divisive episode. I'm going to be very bullish on that. And we'll see if that actually does come out. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's it. And then when we come back in February, it's a whole new, new shows, a new show taking over the time slot. But we're going to get another brief one off for the Saturday time slot. But then we'll get a brand new show. But you'll see all about that when we come back in... Um, when we're, 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 we're reaching the end. Let's finish off High School Musical Strong. We'll talk about what's coming up next. Then, But if you already want to know what's, com what's coming up, go watch the Action X State of, of the Channel update I did earlier this month so you can see what is the next show after High School Musical. If you're very much curious and want to see me talk about another show in the same vein as a, as a musical comedy, watch that. Otherwise, you'll hear the that proper announcement at the end of the month. Um, but overall, on the overall spectrum of what's in the tube, um, coming up next... Um, in the next week will be, I'm doing, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Um, Big Bang Theory, brief series review on the, t the Monday time slot. Then I'm doing, what am I doing after that? I'm doing Nancy Drew's back. Nancy Drew's back on the Thursday slot. And then, I'll, I'll, and then we're going to do a special one-off for Crisis and Infinite Earths where we're going to review the entirety that George is appearing on that. Hopefully, hopefully I'm pretty sure he remembers. I'm going to have to text him before this that, that comes out. And um, we'll be back next week, Saturday, if you only care about high school musical stuff for the season one review. So stay tuned for all that. And so there's a lot of what's on the tube coming up in the next week. I'm very much excited for it. Um, and that's going to do for me, guys. If you were unaware of this, what's what's on the tube on Action X. If you want to see more what's on the tube, please subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Like, favor, share the video if you want to. And I'll see you guys next week for the season one review. Peace out.